Hi, I'm Hannah. And I'm Elise. Today we are going to be talking about the 1976 Carrie and the 2013 Carrie remake. So Old Carrie was created by Red Bank Films and distributed by Unite Artists. Whereas the new Carrie was created by a number of companies, MGM Studios, Green Gems and Mitre Films, and was distributed into theatres by Sony Pictures, and was distributed on DVD by 20th Century Fox Worldwide, bar the USA, where it was distributed by MGM Productions. <laughs> The 1976 carry was directed by Brian De Palma, who would go on to make Scarface and The Untouchables. Palma put his mark on the original carry and with the theme of violence. No! We'll pray, no! woman! No! Pray no! 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 And blood. <laughs> Alternatively, Carrie 2013 was directed by Kimberly Pierce. And while Pierce didn't have the same number of films on her belt, having only made two films along with Carrie throughout her career, we can still see her mark on the film. Pierce's personal life seems to reflect on Carrie 2013. Pierce is certainly a liberal, having made the movie Boys Don't Cry about the life of a young man who is transgender. Pierce is also openly gay. There are many choices within Pierce's Carrie which reflect this. What we see from Palmer's Carrie shows Carrie's mother, Margaret Housebound, and unwilling to associate herself with the sin of the outer world and all those in it. This made Margaret more of a villain character and really put on display her insanity. Pierce's Margaret, however, has a job she attends outside of the home, one we know she is very good at. Women working and supporting the household is not only what Pierce would believe in, but also a change that has come along in society especially from the 70s, where households would have been more commonplace. There's not as much violence as there was in the original either. In the original, Carrie is battered and bruised by her mother and Chris. Carrie's bully is beaten by her boyfriend, Billy, for speaking out of turn and insulting him. What can be seen in the new Carrie is seemingly violence-free until the inevitable end. This could be because we live now in a society where modern depiction of domestic abuse will be frowned upon. This is another one of Pierce's influences as well. It's worth giving a shout out to these producers of these movies. For our original carry, there was Paul Monash, a esteemed writer and producer of films such as Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kids. For Carrie 2013, we have Kevin Misher, producer of It's Kind of a Funny Story and The Rundown. Both films share a writer, Lawrence D. Cohen, and this was to allow the authenticity of the original carry to carry on into a remake. This appealed to the audiences who were going to see the 2013 carry for nostalgia purposes. The Carrie remake was also written by Roberto Aguirre Sacasa. He turned Stephen King's novel, The Stand, into a graphic novel. Once again, this was to give the script an authenticity of an author who not only knew King's work, but has worked with him before. While some remakes stray away from the original genre, Carrie sticks to horror. Although given the nature of the film, it would be pretty hard to make it anything other than horror. Although the remake of Carrie does seem to have more team drama aspects to it, the original continuous violence is almost replaced by the psychological effects on Carrie's well-being as a result of her torture day in and day out. The original Carrie was certified an 18. However, the remake was certified a 15. The target audience for horror films are generally aimed at young people. The general age groups are early 20s, and this falls in line with the age certification of the original. However, the new Carrie features of reduced violence could be a result of the age certification. While a large number of viewers were there to watch the new carry for Nostalgia Factor, the cast proved they wanted the real and a younger audience. Those who were involved, or soon to be involved, with popular culture. In the original carry, there were many up-and-coming actors such as John Travolta, who would go on to be in Grease, Saturday Night Fever, Pulp Fiction and many more, and Sissy Spacek, who went on to make films such as The Help. In the new carry, there are also a cast of up-and-coming actors such as Ansel Elgort, who would go on to be in The Faulkner Stars and Baby Driver. There is also Chloe Grace Moretz, who has been in Kick-Ass and would go on to be in Bad Neighbours 2 and Brain on Fire. Within the new carry, however, the older cast members are well known, such as Julianne Moore and Judy Greer. I assume this is to encourage older audiences who maybe hadn't seen the original carry to come watch. Budget-wise, there were some high hopes for the Carrie remake. The original had a budget of $1.8 million compared to the remake, which had a budget of $30 million. While this can be a down to an ever-growing film market, 
This could also be to make the film look good. People want to see a movie with a decent FX and a general nice look and feel to it. The original carry made $33.8 million, and given the low budget, this proves the film was loved by audiences. The remake of Carrie made $85 million in the box office. People wanted to see this remake and didn't wait for the DVD release. So the good and bad of the remake, decreased violence, good because it's more relevant to our society. Bad because it decreased the shock factor. The original kept us on our toes and this is what King wanted. He wanted the shock and disturb readers, which is what the original had and the remake lacked. $28 million budget difference. Good. The film looked good when it could have looked tacky, which the original did have elements of. Bad. It didn't hold up to the 1976 version. Screen rant reads, Carrie isn't going to win the same accolades as the first one. The original was even reviewed as one of the best films of all time, and the remake, while good, just didn't have an authenticity to go down as anything more than a remake.